Today on the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop, learn to build a bulk storage bin. The Appalachian Heritage Woodshop is brought to you by Christian Internet Services, Common Sense Internet Marketing and Web Design. Internet Marketing Commissions are based on results. Robinson and Mackle, thinking business, practicing law. Waterlock's unique tongue oil and resin blend stains, sealers, and finishes. The go-to finish for wood enthusiasts since 1910. Appalachia covers over 200,000 square miles across 13 eastern states where you will find steep, rugged mountains, vast, lush forests, swift moving streams, and valley farmlands. Appalachian settlers were a unique breed. Isolated by the rough terrain, mountain dwellers had to be self-reliant and innovative to survive the harsh living conditions. Good morning. What can I do you for? Like a glass of coffee beans. Absolutely. Good. They're fresh. Yeah, they smell good. Do you want about a pound? A pound. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. This is Gerald Vance with the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop. I'm coming from Wayne County, West Virginia. I'm at Heritage Farm Museum and Village. I'm in the general store. And here is Major Sims, the tour guide here at the General Store. How are you doing, Major? I'm doing great, Gerald. How are you? I'm doing great. Today, I was wanting the viewers to see this bulk storage bin that Absolutely. you have here in the store. Absolutely. Yeah. We could store coffee for six to eight months in a good storage mm -hmm. bin, and it allowed us to have enough so that regardless of whether you were coming in uh, once a month or once a year, we would try out enough to have to meet your needs. Yeah. The country store was that transition between you doing everything yourself uh, and now you're doing other things and yeah. we need to supply your basic needs. Yeah. yeah. And then they also came in here to purchase things that they didn't have access to. Right. And coffee beans is a good coffee example. Coffee beans was a good example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a real nice piece here, very simple construction. So what I'd like to do is go back to my shop and I'll show you all how to build this bulk storage bin. It doesn't matter if you're using hand tools or machinery in your shop. You need to know the safe way to operate your equipment. Make certain you have the proper safety equipment and most importantly, use your PPE. Be safe and enjoy your shop time. Now I've glued up a couple of poplar boards to create the panels or the sides for the storage bin. There's a couple things I wanted to show you. When I have my logs milled at the sawmill, I have them cut an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter thick. That's five quarters or just slightly under five quarters. Now there's two reasons I do that. One is I can dimension the boards, glue them up into a panel, and then I can take the panel and dimension that. And by that I mean I run it through the planer and through the sander and that way the glue line just disappears and that's what I've done here. The other reason I have them milled thick is because a lot of the old furniture uses wood that is seven eighths of an inch thick or even thicker. So rather than building with three quarters of an inch thick I aim for my final dimension to be seven eighths of an inch thick therefore I have to start out with a thicker board so that's why I have my boards milled thick. Now again, when I glue up a board, I take my time to make sure that the grain matches real good. And in this case, I did what is called a end grain or butt grain match. Now let me move these panels and I'll show you what a butt grain match is. Now here is a scrap piece of wood that I dimensioned and then I took it over and cross cut it. Now if you notice, it is one board, cross cut, and then you fold it back on itself, pivot it on one corner, and when you do that, 
and you look at the end grain, the end grain looks like a book match. But what that does, that makes the face grain very pleasing to the eye, and it just blends together real good. So that's called an end grain or butt grain match, and I do that a lot. So now that I've got my panels glued up, I'm going to take these over to the planer, plane them, run them through the drum sander, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I cut the top angle on the sides for the storage bin. Okay, I've completed dimensioning the two side panels. Now I'm ready to cut the angle. Uh, first thing I want to say is right now the panels are just a little bit wider than what I need, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Now to cut this angle, I can do that with a template at the router table. I can do it with a template over at the table saw, but I'm going to do it at the band saw, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So first thing I'm going to do is apply some double stick tape to the panels because it's very critical that the two be identical. Your angle can be off a half a degree as long as they're both identical. Now I want to make sure that doesn't come apart, so I want to stick it together real good with that double stick tape. So I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure with the vise. As you can see, I stayed just outside the line. So now I'm going to take these over to the joiner while they're still attached and joint this edge. Okay, now that I've jointed the angle that I cut on the bandsaw, it's perfectly smooth and they're both identical. Now I want to show you why I left this panel about a quarter of an inch long. If there was any tear out, I'd go to the table saw and rip it off and get rid of the tear out. Or I can just joint this edge here on the joiner to get rid of the tear out. Okay, now I've shaped a little contour at the bottom of the side. And now I'm going to cut that out here on the bandsaw. Before I try to cut the contour, I'm going to make some relief cuts. Okay, I've cut a stretcher to the correct length that goes on the back. It will fit on the back like this. I wanted to show you how I do that. This is one of the boards that will be on the back. So I line it up. And this fits on there like that. So what I've done is I've marked the very center. And I'm going to use a biscuit joiner and put a number zero biscuit in here to hold this in place. Okay, I've got the proper depth set on the biscuit joiner and I've got it set on zero biscuit.
there's the way it fits together. For the bottom back stretcher, I've got a fence set up and my joiner against the fence and I'm ready to joint the biscuit slot. There you have it. Okay, I've dry clamped it together, it fits good. So now I'm gonna remove the clamps and glue it up. And I wanna show you the process so you can understand how it goes together. This is the front. Now I gotta put a little bit of glue down in the slot, biscuit slot. Now stand this up on its back this one up on its back and i've got two backboards for the spacer and now i'm ready to put this together now i just need to align the biscuits with the slots and clamp it together the top goes together real easy clamp on it. Okay, now that I've got the glue there, I'm ready to put the front on. And it just drops right into place. Like that, and I gotta line the top edge up. Now I need to just let the glue set up. Okay, now I've got my miter fence set up with a stop block to the correct distance. So I'm gonna cut all the back slats while the glue is drying on the case. Okay, now I'm going to install the bottom support boards. And we'll do that with just a very little bit of glue in the middle because it is cross grain. And then I'll put them in place with a brad nailer. The bottom boards are shiplap. I'm ready to install them. And again, this is cross grain on the supports. So I'm gonna put just one dab of glue in the middle and then hold it in place with a uh, brad. And now I'll do the same thing to each board as I go down. And like I said, this is shiplap. There's the bottom. Now I've removed the clamps from the cabinet. I've laid it on its front so gravity can be my friend. Uh, the back I have already cut to the correct length. And if you notice, I deliberately cut these about a sixteenth of an inch short from the bottom of the foot. That way it'll rest on the foot and not the back. And these boards are very narrow, so I'm going to put a bead of glue across through here, lay these in place, and then shoot them with a uh, brad.
I need to rip the last one. Okay, I used a bevel gauge to find the angle I cut on the top of the side. Then I used that bevel gauge to set the angle on the table saw. Now I'm ready to cross cut that angle on the top of the front. Okay, I've glued up the lid and now I'm ready to cut it to the correct size. If you remember, the top angle on the bulk storage bin was 25 degrees. I need to bisect that angle. So I've got the table saw set up at 12 and a half degrees. So I'm going to rip an angle cut 12 and a half degrees on the top and then 12 and a half degrees on the lid and it'll be a good fit. Now I'm ready to cut the lid to the proper length. And again, I'm using a panel cutter. Here I'm using a flexible thin strip of wood and a couple clamps to mark a contour. Now I'm going to cut that contour on the bandsaw. I've got my guard set up and my dust collection on. I'm ready to go. Now I'm ready to sand that contour. Spindle sander is the best option for that. I want to talk to you about the type of finish I'm going to use. I'm going to use a milk paint finish. It's a very old finish. It's 100% organic. It's actually made up of milk, the protein in milk, lime, dissolved limestone, and then an organic coloring. So the way I like to do it is I mix it one to one. I like to mix it in a quart jar and I prefer to put in the powder and about half of the required liquid and I prefer to mix it with a fork because it makes it easier to break up the clumps. And then once I get it uh, dissolved, it'll be a very thick paste-like consistency. Then I add the rest of the liquid, and then I can put the lid on the jar and shake it. Now I need to let it set for about 15, 20 minutes, and it'll thicken up. If it's too thick, you just add more water. Now this has already sat. It's ready to apply. And as you can see, it's just a little bit on the thick side, so I'm going to add a little bit of water before I start. I like for it to be a little bit thinner than latex paint. Before I apply the first coat of milk paint, I like to get the surface slightly wet. So I use a damp rag and just lightly touch up on it. And the reason for this the milk paint will absorb into the grain of the wood and it actually dries too fast. So if you get it wet, then it will go on a little bit more even. Always precondition your brush. Since this is water-based, you just condition it with water. Don't worry about the brush marks. 
These will be taken care of on the second coat. Now a lot of people are concerned about uh, raising the grain with milk paint. That's not an issue because what I'm going to do is what's called bury the grain. And by that what I do is put it on. It will raise the grain. And then I just lightly sand. And then when I give it the second coat, what grain is raised is just buried in the second coat. So it's not an issue. The one thing you don't want to do is keep going over where you've already applied it because it will gum up. As you can see, it goes on real easy. brush strokes but that's fine here is the bulk bin after I put the milk paint on it I gave it two coats of Lexington green sanding between coats and if you remember the original had stenciled coffee beans on it well, rather than stencil that we're going to stencil a decorative uh, flower so this is what it will look like when it is done it's done in stages so I've got the first stencil on there. I'm going to take my brush. I've got the collar on the wood here. And for stencil, what you do is you load up the brush. Then you get most of the paint off of the brush. And I use just a paper towel. Now I've got the stencil taped down and, and what I want to do is go from the outside in so there's less chance of the paint getting under the stencil. So I just do this all the way around. And if you do get a little bit under the stencil, it's not a big deal. a little bit more on my brush and again get most of it off and then I want to do the very center Alright, I've changed to the other stencil. I've got it lined up based on my reference marks. Taped it down using some painter's tape. And now I'm going to use a clean brush and load it up with the other collar. And again, you want a dry brush, so you want to get a lot of this off. Okay, now let me take that stencil off. And what I like to do is move it up just a little bit and look. And if there's a problem, I can put it back down. This is good. Okay, I've installed the third stencil, overlaid again, lining it up, putting it in place with painter's tape. And 
been using the third collar and of course a clean brush. Again, I use the dry brush technique. And so you don't see the brush marks too bad. I'll dab it afterwards. Gives a good model. Here's the completed bulk storage bin. It turned out really nice. Got some nice stencils on the lid. Remember the original had coffee written on it. This is a nice looking functional piece. Be good in your house or your shop. Has a lot of storage room inside of it. If you're interested in any information or plans on any of the items featured on the Appalachian Heritage Woodshop, just check out our website, AppalachianHeritageWoodshop.com. Remember, be proud of your Appalachian heritage.